Okay. <clears throat> it just happens to be Saturday. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm sorry because I was busy Saturday uh, uh, going live on live stream with a guest Oy. on Saturday. I did three shows yesterday. It happens to be Sunday afternoon, uh, March the 16th, 2014. And yes, yes, it is St. Patrick's Day weekend. 2014. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Erin Go Bra? Or, or is it Erin Go Brawless? Erin Go Brawless. Erin Go Brawless. And, uh, howdy, folks. As you can see, I'm dressed for the occasion. I got me tie on. Golden, uh, gold with uh, green shamrocks. I got uh, me shillelagh. Blackthorn shillelagh, and uh, tomorrow I will be partaking in all-you-can-eat corned beef and cabbage at the Bond Buffet in Maywood, New Jersey, for you people that want yours truly's autograph. I will be there with the one and only uh, four-time and again uh, East Coast Professional Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, the reinforcer Andrew Anderson, and uh, also the star of the movie The Wrestler with uh, Mickey Rourke and Marissa Tomei, which won a Golden Globe. I will be there with the one and only Andrew Anderson, the nephew of, of uh, Arn Anderson, and him and myself, yours truly, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, will be gorging ourselves on a corned beef and crappage, I'm sorry, cabbage. 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 Cabbage, very good for you. Sir. And I will eat it till I bust. Yes, I love corned beef, especially brisket, but I love the cabbage. The whole member of the cruciferous veg vegetable family, which includes cabbage, kale, uh, collard greens, uh, Brus Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli. Broccoli. Why do some people call it collie? My grandmother said that. Uh, my, my relatives said collie. It's actually cauliflower. Well, it's C-A-U-L. Call flower. Cauliflower. You mean like cauliflower ears? At the <laughs> no, I was just... people. Some people might uh, confuse it with collie, like a C-O-L-I. Or the doggy. Or K K A L I, I believe it's an Indian word. But regardless, I love it. Oh, even the Chinese uh, uh, cabbage—I think they call it Napa. It's it's very tasty um, uh, when you pickle, you know, pickled. I've had it pickled. I've had it um, uh, made like kimchi, which is very spicy. That's they call Korean. Brussels sprouts little kabaches. Well, they look like little, little yeah, cabbages. Little uh, um, the, um, yeah, I've had kimchi. I've had uh, pickled Chinese cabbage. And uh, it's very good in stir-fry. It's actually very, very tasty. I even made homemade coleslaw with the Chinese Napa cabbage. It came out great. But anyway, welcome to Uncensored hard-hitting truth on St. Patrick's Day weekend 2014. Formerly known as Progressive Discussions, we are not going to allow ourselves to be associated in, with any particular political party or category or label. No more labels. It's all about what Confucius said about doing the right thing about righteousness, doing the right thing, and making the right decisions, not about political parties. Using common sense, using logic based on facts, you know, weighing out the pros and cons, and using your heart, your heart and your conscience, which is the same stuff, the same thing, and making the right decisions. Well, not in the, not when you're dealing with a Republican. No, then you just... You just number one, they don't have no conscience. Well, you... They don't have no heart. And they don't have any oxytocin. 
You gotta have heart. Oh, you really How can a person heart. be called a patriot who wants to destroy your government? What about the in, in Wisconsin, the uh, governor, the douchebag Governor Scott Walker wants to fine protesters a thousand dollars a day and, and plus throw you in jail for uh, exercising your constitutional right to express yourself in, in, a, in, a, in a peaceful protest. Well, that's fascism, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Totalitarianism. But hey, that's the only way Republicans can get their policies into effect. By force. By force and by stealth. By lying. Mm -hmm. Because a normal person would not put their policies into effect no. if they knew the outcomes. Normal person with a conscience and, and, and that it's not a sociopath. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, I, I, I finally remembered what I was trying to uh, remember about Chris Christie on Wednesday. Chris Christie, the little... <laughs> fat bastard. <laughs> he had in his possession some souvenirs of 9-11 and he gave it instead of donating it to uh, a, an organization where the public can view it he gave it as gifts to his cronies to his rich cronies. Not so only to his cronies but to those democratic mayors that supported him. Trying to win favor. That's correct. Curry favor. Curry favor has nothing to do with the spice. Curry yeah. favor, you mean schmoozing? Yeah. You know, but, uh, uh, buttering up the bread, whatever you want to call it. Polishing the Butter apple. On the biscuit. Well, Christy would probably love that. Buttermilk biscuits. As Phil Robertson with stick, would say. With a stick of butter on it. On what? the Duck Dynasty. Butter up the biscuit. Butter the biscuit. Butter on the biscuit. I like it has a sexual connotation. I love comparing things to food also because I love good food. Nothing like it, you know. Not GMO crap. You're not 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 these so-called hamburgers at McDonald's that are, are mostly uh, uh, ground up mystery roadkill or whatever you want to call it, uh, saturated with ammonia, you know. I'm they, talking about real food. They are trying to get laws passed so that you can't say that anymore. You cannot criticize any corporations. Screw them. Okay. But what if, what if it's a fact that they do what it they do? It doesn't matter. Facts do not matter in today's world. So what you're saying is um, a pure fascist society with censorship. That's correct. Well, censorship goes along with that. Well, if they, hey, <laughs> if, if that really becomes the law, that should remove a lot of um, uh, YouTube accounts, YouTube channels, and 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 most of the. Oh, God only knows how many videos have uh, well, critical content of of. Uh, not people, only that, they, on hey, they, they're looking right now to to take the neutrality away from the internet. You know what? To make it a corporate thing. You can't change how people feel if they have hatred towards uh, crony capitalism or corporate CEOs that are greedy yeah, but you and can, evil. you can tamp them down. If they have hatred... The Russians did it for how many years? Behind the Iron Curtain. Well, in that case, it was a totalitarian... The, the, the leader was like uh, a military dictator. It was a totalitarian... You killed 30 million people, Mr. Stalin. Stalin. That sort of quiets people down. You mean uh, getting killed at it? Well, Death? yeah, for those people that get killed, yeah, but it quiets the other critics down. Yeah, because they're because they too, because they're afraid might get killed. <coughs> okay. So it's um, well, didn't didn't the uh, the monarchies the uh, didn't uh, the kings also use that that same tactic? Well, of course. Like uh, let's say the king was a, was a real piece of shit asshole. And everybody started saying, in, in in the pubs, you know, hey, that that king of ours, he's a piece of shit. He's a piece. then and then it gets back to the king, and he gets all insulted. All kings are assholes. Got no point. one is above anyone else. 
Even even Caesar could be a king. Even Roman emperors were. Uh, I'm sure there were many kings throughout the history of mankind that I would say maybe 99 percent of them were total assholes. I would say 100 percent because they're all elitists. Yeah. They are better than you. They own all the land. You own. You own. They just, own the deer. You own your cottage and the little bit of land around it. Maybe. Yeah. Well, the Irish were all oppressed for centuries. They couldn't. They couldn't own farms or plantations. Or uh, the 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 English took away uh, took over the beef industry. You know, and uh, and and the Irish couldn't even have commercial fishing boats. And uh, all the cattle, the the, the all the uh, livestock went to the king, and the Irish could only farm their piece of ground around their their cottage, their homes, yeah. and uh, you know, and they just they were completely um, oppressed, and uh, that's a perfect example of uh, what, would you, what would you say, feudalism and monarchy. It's a perfect example of people being elitist. Any kind of elitist. Better, exactly. You don't have to. I mean, Nimrod was the first king. Before that, there were no kings. Well, Nebuchadnezzar was it Nebuchadnezzar of uh, Babylon a king? Yes, he was a king. But uh, and Xerxes of the Persian Empire. Of course, but that Nimrod was the first king. And when the ancient Israel Israelis wanted a king, God did not want to give them a king. But he relented and he gave them Saul. And he warned them what Saul would do to you as king. The point is, when you separate yourself from all others and make yourself better than them, you got a problem. And you know what? Despite the fact that we have these elitists today in the, in the United States and they're right wing, the people still re-elect them. Yes, they do. <laughs> Sorry. They still are re-elected. They re-elected piece of shit uh, Mr. asshole. Mr. Jolly down in Florida. They they yeah, Jolly. They 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 re-elected Jolly in Florida. They re-elected Scott Walker in Wisconsin. You know, and uh, look what they got. These people are spellbound. They're bewitched. These people that live way out yonder, and you know, in all those uh, southern, western red states. In this case, traditionally Democrat states like, like Wisconsin. And a state with elderly people who need to protect their social security. They elect yeah. people who want to do away with that. Yeah. Well, and then M Michelle Bachman in, uh, in Minnesota. Minnesota was always like the state of Hubert Humphrey and George McGovern. You know, it was a Democrat state. What is wrong with these Americans today? They, the proof is in the pudding. It's obvious what Republicans say and do. They say insane things, and they do uh, things that are bad yeah. for, for the mainstream. But they continue to reelect them. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know. But anyway, let me get started. I I don't have a lot to say here, so you know, we'll get right to the readings <coughs> for this uh, show. Uh, uncensored, hard hitting truth. Excuse me. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, I went to visit um, my uh, brother in law's father who had a uh, knee replacement surgery. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, steel on um, plastic, you know, because he had bone on bone. He, need, he needed it. And. Hope he didn't get a striker. Well, thankfully. He's recovering quite well with minimal discomfort and pain. His, in other words, his body is accept, has accepted the joint. But and I mean striker. What does that mean? It's one of the manufacturers of the knee replacements and uh, hip replacements. I'll find out. And if it's that, they're, they're having problems and uh, the lawyers are really on the case. Did they recall? Well, how do you re It's used. That's right. How do you well, recall? You know, but the, well, the ones that were in stock, I mean. There's also one called, I think it's Stephen and Nephew. You know what else has been, uh, is ha they're having lawsuits about? The, um, the Mirena IUD, the intrauterine contraceptive device, has, has been known to get embedded and require surgical removal. In the woman. Uh, as a, on a personal note, <laughs> I was with a young lady. Yeah. 
once upon a time. Yes. <laughs> oh, and the I, string I, was the string was dangling there. Oh yuck! <laughs> yeah, but with it, was it not a diaphragm when the string is dangling? No, it was the because uh, an IUD stays yeah. in there. It, uh, yeah. Well, how the hell do you think you get it out? Well, you don't get it you out. You have to take it out every couple of years. No, the um, the the no no yes, no no. Yes, no the, yes. I give you an example. The copper IUD, which is non-hormonal. Mm -hmm. It lasts, I hear, 12 years. Well, so I wouldn't put my faith in that, but... Uh, well, yeah, uh, but the, but mar the Mirena... But they have a way to take it out. The, the Mirena is plastic, but it has hormones in it, which I wouldn't do. Mm. But, you know, a lot of women, they don't care. They, they Their doctor says pharmaceuticals, hormones, uh, they just they don't question it. They go mm -hmm. with it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's complications now with the I I uh, well, as John Travolta said on Saturday Night Fever, he called it a IOU. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, he called you it. You better I hope it don't be an IOU. That was when he was having sex with that that girl, and uh, in the in the back seat of the car, and he says, uh, "You want a pill?" She says, "No." He says, uh, "IOU, you got an IOU?" That was so friggin' funny. Oh man! Anyway, did you see yesterday? Yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Well, it was on the news. Uh, yesterday. There's a point to the story. I'll get to it. Well, well, tell me. The uh, this uh, vet, not a vet, a regular uh, female doctor. Yeah. Had to deliver by cesarean section yesterday a gorilla. Was it absolutely necessary to yes. deliver by cesarean se yes. se se section? And now the gorilla herself is doing all okay, but. The baby is not with her because it's in the ICU or whatever. Oh, so if it was, care of it. so if it was a male performing the cesarean section, I guess the patient would be the gorilla of my dreams. Uh. Ah, these are me levity bells, eh? me levity bells for St. Patrick's Day. Oh my God. Anyway, let me finish the story. Yeah. So I'm in Kessler uh, Medical Center. Institute. Institute, which is very popular. West. This one is in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Oh yeah, that's right. It, they have a... Uh, it used, it used to be called the Saddlebrook Hospital. The infamous... The big one is in West... Uh, what is oh. that? West Orange? They're all over. They're no, it's the big institute is up there. Yeah. Well, this is... They're, they're, they specialize in rehab. Yes, they do. Okay. So anyway, very very lovely place. So I'm vis I visit him, the gentleman, and uh, joking around with him. I lifted his spirits. He was happy to see me. Hung out there for a while. His wife was there, and you know, he's a man in his early 80s, and uh, but he's very he's sh very smart. He used to be uh, the head of a school system in, in a nearby town. Uh, Garfield, New Jersey. He was a teacher and everything. He is a very well-educated, uh, intelligent man. So we had a nice. I had a nice visit with him. But as I was looking for his room, I noticed that the uh, the staff that worked in the offices of Kessler, some of them were behind the desk with uh, face masks on, with with masks. So I happened to ask them. I thought it was odd. I says, "Why the mask? You're, are you mostly you mostly work in the office?" She says, "Yeah." I said, "Why the mask?" Well, I she says I decided not to get the flu shot this year, and Kessler, the administration, uh, demanded that we wear masks while we we are on our shift inside of the building. So I says, what is this, like a form of punishment? So she just shrugged her shoulders and said, <laughs> and chuckled. I mean, yeah. it sounds like a form of punishment for those that don't want to comply with, with the flu vaccine to me. What do you That's think? That's right. That's right. <laughs> if you did, did disagree with officials, you are in trouble. So even though this woman was behind a computer, you know, Behind a monitor, she had to wear a mask as long as she was in the building, which means that if you don't get a vaccine, that you are putting others at risk. A vaccine automatically. That, that may, 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 may 
be only 62% effective, but is not effective against the two strains that are here this year. Oh, is that so? That's correct. And what about the fact, like the late great Carl Carlton Fredericks used to say, that these uh, these uh, germs have a habit of mutating and coming back uh, yeah, cool. stronger yeah, than ever course, and um, resistant to the uh, antibiotics. But there's no actual proof or evidence or uh, 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 <coughs> what the hell do you call it? The, the blind uh, the double study, blind double placebo blind studies. studies. Yeah, there's none of those that prove <coughs> that that vaccines are effective to do what they're supposed to do. There's none. No, to me, it's a big racket. It's what it is. It's a big farm, big pharma racket. That's right. Go to CVS. Go to Walgreens. Hey, they'll give you your shot. Well, they got a big sign there. Twenty some bucks. We give vaccine. We give shots. We give flu shots. Yep. You know, and and they're always pushing for. And this is the punishment that the Kessler employees in Saddlebrook, uh, New Jersey, on uh, Market Street. This is what they have to. Uh, do what they're forced to do. Wear masks even if they're walking in a hallway or, or in the office. Yeah. And I don't think it's fair at all. Well, it's not fair, but also, though, people who do do that, who want to take that uh, position, should understand that they should be doing things to boost their immune system. Yeah. Well, I, I said not to her... It's not just a matter of saying, I, I don't want the vaccine. Well, I said to her, um, are you aware that... Uh, are you aware of the horrible negative side effects of uh, getting a vaccine? She just yes, I am. Thymosol and, and the squalene and all the yeah, other junk toxic, that's in it. Toxic, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, th there you go. I mean, uh, that's the punishment. you got to wear masks and... Uh, and that's that. And when and it's a big mask too. I mean, you you can't even see what the woman looks like. Mil mascaras. Maybe she's a wrestler. Mil mascaras. Lucha libre. <coughs> or like a Islamic woman who's covered. Oh, geez. please, <coughs> please, please. Yeah. Okay. Now, second and last thing. I want to talk about. <coughs> mm -hmm. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, the, the furnace is going to kick in. Democrats, when the Dem everybody thinks, especially many progressive liberals that are diehard Democrats, they think that the Democratic Party has their best interests at heart, a one hundred percent. Well. In this case, this is based on something that myself and and my uh, partner that I forgot to pipe aboard. Better I late. guess we're still on land then. Better late than never. We ain't on the ship. I'll I'll pipe them. <coughs> we were discussing on Wednesday with our weekly meeting that yes, a lot of people are, are still loyal. To the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party is part of the two-party system, which happens to be corrupt. Uh, but they are still the lesser of the two evils. Keep that in mind. As much as people out there are are mocking Hillary Clinton, posting very unflattering, posting very unflattering photographs of Hillary despite the fact if she did get the nomination she would she still will be the lesser of the two evils okay but you people that are still died hard Democrats do you realize that when Barack Obama first took office the Democrats for a certain period of time were not only in control of the White House, but they were still in, in control of the Senate and the House of Representatives, the Congress. And they could have, uh, they could have voted yes a, a, a for the single payer public option health care reform system. For the, for the single payer system, they could have installed this single-payer system 
when the Democrats had control of all three bodies of the government, but they did not. Because... It went to the back burner. Mr. Barack Obama, just like Mr. Clinton and Mrs. Clinton, are corporatists. And that is my point that I'm driving at. That you people out there on, on many internet groups that are progressive liberal, all you do is show loyalty and allegiance to the Democratic Party. Instead of just showing loyalty and allegiance to um, a certain mindset of doing the right thing. Just doing the right thing for the most people, for the mainstream masses, for the little guy. And not be loyal to party. Forget about parties. Why do you think this is one of the reasons why we took progressive discussions out of the, the, the name of the show? We, we changed the name. Because I was getting all these these extreme left-wing people who were very adaptive supporting, they were very passive, they, uh, they were uh, very afraid of uh, offending anyone, even, even, even a Republican. They were very concerned about what the Republicans thought of them. Mm -hmm. Unlike a real hero with a, with a backbone like Jesse Ventura uh, and Alex Jones and uh, let's say a Ralph Nader or whatever, uh, Gary No, and uh, these people are not concerned over who likes them and who approves of them. Mm -hmm. They say what's on their mind and they speak from the heart and that's it. And if you like it, if you agree with it, great. If you're not, oh well, you know. But these people are Democratic Party loyalists and uh, I just had sycophants. a sycophants, there you go, sycophants, kiss-ups, um, and I just, I couldn't stand them anymore, they were, I, how could you, how could you uh, do positive things for mainstream if you're constantly trying to compromise with the right wing? Which I heard the word, the word again, uh, a bipartisanship crap again. The Democrats are still trying to compromise with the uh, Republican Congress, and it's not going to work. I remember what bipartisanship means to Republicans: getting their way. It doesn't really mean bipartisanship. No, it means or getting their it getting means getting their way. Yes, getting their way. Right. They don't get their way. You're not compromising. You're not being bipartisan. No. No. No, not at all. So uh, that's that. Um, you know, and uh, I had, we had to do what we had to do. And uh, uh, of course, the Facebook group is no longer progressive discussions. It's also uncensored. Did the glitch, did the glitch get fixed? Well, the, the glitch did not get fixed because I did not I did not get back my original 800 and some odd members. I have 66 or 67 members. I used to have well over 800, so I don't know if it was a glitch, Dr. Uh, Bill. Well, you better find out what the hell it was. Uh, I, you know, I, I would have reported it to Facebook if I knew of where to go to contact them. There's really, it's almost like they don't want to be contacted directly by anyone. Well, whether <laughs> it works or not, etc., that contact thing is up there on the right hand, you know. All right, I'll try it. On top of the page. I'll try it and um, I'll report what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it didn't happen to any of my other groups, only the political group. And the political group is called Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth. No longer progressive discussions. Now, Facebook has even given me a hard time changing the name of my promo page. I have to show evidence that the, the, na the new name of the promo page matches what we, what, what we represent, what we're about. What's with all this uh, intrusion all of a sudden? 
uh, it seems to me like Facebook. it's manipulation. Right? They want you to do what they want to do according to your table, etc., etc. Who cares what the hell you do if you got something titled something? You mean to tell me that you can't bring in something else occasionally? No, no, they... That may be not uh, 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 in line with your title? That's true. They, well, they, well, that's bullshit, ain't it? That's they're, kind of censorship. They're trying to control your material yeah. on your so-called free site or a free profile on Facebook. They want more control over you on your free account, <clears throat> but they can shove all the spam they want down your throat. All the advertisement they want. Oh God, that's fine, you know. But I will try to contact them. Um, um, I mean, there's no way that that many people overnight can quit a group exactly. simultaneously. Because many of them said, "Hey, James, what's the big deal? Why'd you kick me out?" I says, "I didn't kick you out." Oh wait a minute! See now, now you're saying somebody kicked them out. No, no, they didn't I, leave voluntarily. No, they they noticed that they they noticed that they were no longer members. They like they didn't get like um. See. They didn't get a notice saying that we are removing you. They just were simply not there anymore. Uh, well, then that's Facebook's fault. Yeah. You didn't kick him out, so they did. Whether whether it's a, a, a sabotage. Do, do any of your administrators have the power to do that? They were removed. They were removed too. Okay, so it's Facebook. Uh, it was it was it was down to three members from eight hundred thirty some odd members. It was down to three members. Facebook. This was on Monday uh, Monday or Tuesday uh, morning. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so. Um, Oh man, what was I gonna do? Um, oh, it's gonna pipe your board. I, I totally forgot because I was so wrapped up in the festivities. Okay. Hey, that was uh, that was a couple months ago. Festivus. Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> I will now formally pipe aboard our. Um, our hard-hitting truth starship Uncensored censored, starship. named censored starship censored my illustrious co-host and mentor with my authentic bosun's whistle now if i had if i had bagpipes and i knew how to play the bagpipes i would i would use bagpipes but i don't have one and i don't uh, know how to play it but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure many of those uh, blonde bombshells that work on Fox News know how to play the bagpipes. No. If you get my drift, they do the flute, skin flute. They are flautists. They're flautists. Yeah, you're damn right. Matey and welcome aboard the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this St. Patrick's Day weekend? Uh, I'm still alive, still kicking. Yeah, and I heard, I heard the new issue of Newsletter Censored is sort of uh, sizzling right now on the pancake griddle. No, it's at the printer. Oh, at the printer. Well, isn't that the same as like one side of the it's pancake. already cooked one side of the pancake is already cooked so well, what you're trying to tell me you just flipped the pancake i flipped the pancake a day or two ago now it's the printer's time to okay to bring it to the table now what is to dress it at the table in other words he's going to be putting the the butter on it and the and the maple syrup or you uh, yeah he's, grade a no grade b crap no, grade A maple syrup yeah. from Canada. It's the one I used to get. It was a lot cheaper than the uh, than the American maple syrup. Gee, uh, I wonder yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. Ale were used to sell it in a metal container. No, I used to get it in a supermarket. It was a store brand. What was it in? 
Glass. A uh, glass. 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 Uh, this one was in a metal container. Oh. Well, I used to put it on my pancakes before so, I knew about my low blood sugar problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, but there's nothing like uh, real maple syrup. And incidentally, it takes like 40 gallons of sugar maple sap bo go, yeah. boiled down to one gallon of them. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's so pricey. It's a delicacy. What can I say? Now, uh, um, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. Um, Well, kind of slipped my mind, but let us now sink our teeth into these uh, readings. Slipped your mind. I hope it didn't fall on the floor. And uh, how come you get to ring the bell? I don't. What the I hell? I gotta waste my time. I mean, oh. I never bells. get a bell. Liberty I never bells. got a bell. I'm just. Never read uh, what the what the hell was the name? I never got a dinner. Red buttons. Red buttons. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm just a little. Speaking of I'm that, just David, tired from yesterday. David Brenner. I was up. Yeah, he died. Oh. Did he die already? Because no. you said last night no. he was in a coma. No, he, he died. Okay. I want to salute. May he rest in peace. A uh, uh, um, uh, very famous uh, comedian that was uh, a guest on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson many times. Mr. David Brenner uh, passed away. Uh, he was in a coma. I believe he had cancer. And, yeah, it's uh, a fast-spreading cancer, whatever that was. Yeah, is that what they, what they mean by the word metastasize? Yeah. When it, yeah. Poor guy. Uh, I I just saw I saw him on a panel of comedians uh, this past month on a show and uh, past month. Well, yeah. Well, he didn't look. Um, mm. He didn't look bad. No, no. He didn't look like the picture of health. Is what oh. I'm saying. Okay, there I believe you go. he was yeah. in his uh, or, or he was about 80 years 70, old. 70, I think it said. Late 70s? No, 70, I think. Oh, all right, moment of silence. All right, for David Brenner. Okay, rest in peace. Um, okay, let us sink our teeth into these readings. A San Francisco company is selling a machine that can do every task to serve 360 burgers per hour. It can, to your order, grind and sear the meat, cut the tomato and onion, apply the condiments, and put it all together. There goes, there goes even more employees laid off. Bingo. It's going to destroy a lot of jobs. No, no kidding. <laughs> if there's one nearby, it will destroy a lot of my pants. And it makes me wonder, as more low-skilled jobs are displaced by technology, what would the United States be like if there were a huge group of citizens for whom there was no work, <clears throat> yet plenty of everything that people need. Yeah, and meanwhile Republicans keep on saying, get a job, you lazy bums. Would we all share? Yeah. Should we? For most of history, we defined participants in the workforce as practically everyone healthy enough to stand up. School for the masses is a modern invention. So is the idea of healthy retirees. We hunted and gathered, sowed and reaped. We made shelters and clothes and shoes. And lately we engaged in industrial tasks that increased productivity but didn't take much brain. Using shuttles and looms and drills and lathes. Work was what humans did. Practically all of them. Practically every waking minute to provide for their needs. Now, the workforce, 
measured as people older than 16 who toil for money or hope to is shrinking. In the United States, it topped out at 66% in the year 2000 and has been dipping since. It is now 63%. It could keep shrinking. <clears throat> Yet, with fewer working, there are no shortages here. Not of food or clothes or medicine or cars or entertainment devices or baffling arrays of implements to clean floors. If you have money, if you're if you're homeless and broke, you don't have anything any of those things. Part of the decline is due to an aging society and a sour economy that has made retirement a more attractive option, or the only option. Mm -hmm. But there's a potentially permanent issue. When this nation was founded, 98% of workers toiled in agriculture. Yeah, family-owned farms. They produced their own food. Then came industrialization. With millions of workers producing automobiles in Detroit and textiles in South Carolina. They mined coal in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and got black lung disease. And made steel in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm and built airplanes in Bethpage, Long Island. But look into a factory, or a farm, or a mine today. You'll see a lot fewer people and a lot more machines than 50 years ago. Building those machines creates jobs, but not the kind regular Joes and Janes can do. We can barely imagine the advances in productivity and technology to come, or how many workers they will displace. Imagine a world so automated that hardly any menial labor can still be done most productively by humans, and much of the work done by humans can only be done by very smart educated ones. Excellent article, by the way. Well, this is what I've been bitching about for years, you know, and it goes back to the, the annual in, uh, uh, income uh, and things of that nature, because there, there will be a time when there aren't enough jobs for everyone, and of course, why, as I keep saying, should we for our survival be dependent upon some corporation. Exactly. When, when we used to produce our own living. Uh, you know with some uh, um, upper management, uh, corporate upper management woman told me one time uh, about automate, you know, robots and, mm -hmm. and uh, people being laid off and the lack of jobs and all that. She says, well, America has to be retrained. To, to do they've, what? They've been saying that for years. To it's a matter. What? That's what they're saying about our jobs that are going to India, that are going to China, that are going to America needs uh, to be Vietnam. retrained. Yeah. To do what? But guess what? What? The jobs that are going to those countries are going to low information voters. No, oh, they don't vote. Low information, low educated people. Right. So that is a lie. And now, and now the old standby to fall back on the fast food restaurants and the re and the food industry, they're going to be put out of a job with this new automation system, this new uh, this new type of robotics. So it's like you know, yeah, all right, right. So if you can't get a job at a fast food restaurant, and more people are shopping online, so the retail stores are hurting and going out of business. And uh, what's left? Uh, supermarkets? We need them. Well, I can't think of anything else. 
as far as I can see, what's going to be left like with Amazon or something like that online or all these shops, you still have to get somebody to package the stuff, to collate it, to do this kind of stuff. These people don't need a PhD. True. So that education thing and, and retraining thing is a bunch of bullshit. Okay? It's, um, they're talking out of their ass. Of course. Cool. They're trying to make it the Americans' fault. It's not the Americans' fault, it's the corporation's fault and the taxes which allow them to outsource. Yeah, That's the fault. They get away because the, 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 the paid uh, politicians allow them to do all this. That's correct. And uh, uh, it, the problem is caused originally by the corporations, That's by true. upper management. So, so retraining somebody? Uh, that, that's to do a, what? That's Fly a, a starship? <laughs> that's such a generalization, you know, I mean, yeah, to do what? Uh, that, that's my answer, to do what? What do you suggest? You want to you put, pe put people out of work in every industry, now you want uh, robotics to make uh, someone's hamburger. <laughs> so, you know, wh what is left? There's only so many jobs available in 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 a, in a food store, in a supermarket, um, and there's going to be even less jobs in a fast food restaurant, and and retail is is dying. Right. So we so. have to take care of those people somehow, some way, so that they can participate in the economy. Yeah. Okay. Cleaning services. Well, they only need so many people, and they certainly don't need PhDs. No, because then they say, oh, this guy's overqualified. Eh? You're too good. You're eh? overqualified. You're underqualified. You have no experience. You have no, no, no certificate. You have no this. You have no that. Certification. The diploma. Blah, blah, blah. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Well, that's another reason why that control and that power must be taken away from the corporation. Defanging the corporation like your, uh, me uh, your hero there. Uh, did FDR say that one time? Bingo. You must defang the corporation. And the wealthy. Well, yes. Well, yeah. The Well, the elitists that uh, are responsible for, I guess, what, sending lobbyists to Washington? <laughs> and greasing palms? <laughs> Imagine a world so automated that hardly any menial labor can still be done most productively by humans. And much of the work done by humans can only be done by very smart, educated ones, okay? Imagine that in the year 2114, in the year 2114, 14. workforce participation has shrunk to 33% because the services of the other two-thirds are not needed. Yet the nation is more awash in plenty than ever. Do we give the unemployed workers food, clothing, shelter? If so, why? They've done nothing to earn these things. If not, why not? There is no shortage. How much can the earners eat? How many homes can they inhabit? If we provide for these non-producers, do we let them have kids and provide for the kids? Can humans be happy without meaningful work to do? And can the ideas of liberalism and conservatism developed when goods were scarce and work plentiful be morally or reasonably applied in a world where work is scarce and goods are plentiful? These are things I wonder about. Although not as much as I wonder how to get a hold of one of those burger machines. I like the way I make um, hamburgers fresh at home. I don't need robotics. I'm not. I'm not that lazy. <laughs> There's nothing. Cooking well. is wonderful. I mean, a, a lot. Of, so many younger generation people make oh, no, like. Oh no, nothing about cooking. Well, they 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 have no interest in learning. They uh, and not any younger, older. Uh, I know some women who can't cook. Well, s some. Some try because they have to eat, but there, there's so many people that are very bad cooks. There used to be a show on the Food yeah. Network many years ago called How to Boil Water. You know how many people automatically, by default, put the flame on the stove high 
at the highest setting and and they walk away and then they smell something burning and uh, you know even if you're boiling water if it evaporates you know and you have like a, a, a steel pot it has a stench to it hey. like a metallic stench but the point is what you can't go wrong with a low flame yeah. low and slow that's the way to go low and slow but they I, I can't get it through their heads my mother does it uh, uh, well first of all people when you put are, a flame the other people I know that are older generation everything is high flame when you put a flame to something do not walk away especially if you're stir frying because you have to use I was gonna say well that's fat the only sit the only cooking that you is required uh, a high flame that requires that's a high, a high flame it's, it's 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 high and uh, hot and fast right is stir frying, but you don't walk away from a wok when you stir frying. You stay there, okay, until everything sort of caramelizes and you know and it's cooked. Uh, it's actually partially cooked, or you know, three quarters cooked, or fifty percent cooked. You, you don't you don't saute the veggies until they're they're soggy. Now with stir frying. Now the broccoli is a beautiful green color. Uh, everything is nice, you know. It's very good. I like that. You ready for a break? Well, yeah, but uh, you actually uh, broccoli and stuff like that, green beans and stuff like that. You actually should shock them when you're done with them, cooking them or or, or poaching them or whatever. Shock them. You put them in ice water. Not not shock when you, them, not when you're stir color. not when you're stir frying it. Maybe when well, you, you steam. Well, you can toss them back again to heat them up. Maybe if you're steaming them. But that uh, keeps the color. Well, if I steam. Uh, vegetables and and the, the water is below it like let's say I'm steaming it in a pressure cooker and a Chinese I, uh, basket or whatever and yes and I watch the clock and I don't forget about them they do have that beautiful they do retain that green color well then that's good that's you know good. and they're soft enough to eat so but a lot of people shock them with the cold, ice cold yeah, ice I thought water. you meant you you know sneak up on the pot and go boo you know, like sh yeah, you could do that, or shock you could electrocute them, whatever. You know, shock them again. You know, you, you ever see that uh, that new wave uh, oven? What is it? Induction, uh, halogen, infrared, the convection, convection, and yeah. Yeah, I know people, uh, two people that have it, and they love the thing. But what bothers me about a new electrical appliance? That you have to plug in. What bothers me is, okay, you spend all that money. How long will it last before it burns out on you? <laughs> Eventually, an electrical appliance, even if it's like a, a toaster or um, it could be anything. Eventually, someday you're going to plug it in, and nothing's going to happen. And nobody around to repair it anymore. Nobody so will going to buy a new one. Yeah, because it's too <coughs> expensive to repair. Planned it's, it, obsolescence. Right. It's cheaper to buy a, a replacement. Yeah. Air conditioners are even that way. Mm -hmm. If the compressor goes and you want the compressor replaced, it's actually more money than buying another air conditioning. Planned obsolescence on purpose, on my purpose. brother. Deliberately planned obsolescence. I, I wish that somebody would do a study. Shame. Hall, Chisler's Hall of Shame on our new cars to see how long they would last you know uh, like the old ones the uh, classic cars today and mm -hmm. they're still around 50 60 years old I don't think the new cars will last that long you know some I'm Especially glad like the ones in Cuba for Christ's sake where they gotta keep uh, repairing the goddamn thing I'm very I'm glad you brought automobiles up because a a, a, a very nice gentleman who's a member of our groups posted a um, a banner with a picture of a, of a car from the early 1920s and it just happened to be the very first electric car I didn't know the electric vehicle is, See? That, is that old so that means that the bugs were taken out of the electric vehicle many years ago so what we're talking about what, what we're seeing here is probably total oppression or suppression by the oil companies the big oil companies uh, and the car companies 
They had the electric vehicle yeah, that right. long ago, my friend. Yeah, well, at least 30, 40 years, but now you're talking the 20s. I think this was like at, at the very beginning. Like, it, it, what was the Model T, the Model A? Model A, Model T. When did it come out? Well, that was the, uh, I don't know when it came around out. Around World but, uh, War One. It was around that time. Yeah, this, this might have uh, been, this was... This was this was either the early twenties or the or, or the late nine uh, the late. Um, I don't think it was in the teens. 30s. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. It w it looked this electric car, uh, 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 Sir William, looked like a Model T by looks, and it was a total one hundred percent electric vehicle, and they had it then. There you go. So that means we could have had, had... what, 60, 70, 80, 90 years to work on the stinking battery? If that was a problem? <sighs> if it was that a problem... That means we had a fully workable electric vehicle, most likely many decades ago. Many decades ago. And, of course, and how did they recharge it? That might have been a problem back then. They had electricity. I mean, yeah. You know. You're right, they had it. Not by Nikolai Tesla. No. By the other chump, chump, jabroni there, Thomas Edison, had sold out to uh, uh, Rockefeller and uh, and J.P. Morgan. Yeah. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting to bring that up. Uh, we are now going to take our break. It's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and we will be back with myself, with the uh, our voiceover artist William H. Morrow III, followed by promo commercial, and uh, then we will return to our show with myself and uh, the Reverend Dr. Bill. Okay, so uh, hang in there, and I will join William H. Morrow III while the Reverend Dr. Bill has his lunch. All right. And again, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, weekend 2014. Try to be good. Yes. Okay, I'm here with William H. Morrow III, our uh, voiceover artist, and uh, <clears throat> how are you feeling today, Mr. Morrow? Cold, like everybody else in the Northeast right now. It was, it was nice and warm, and then uh, we got another blast. It, uh, it happens to be, uh, what is it exactly, March... Uh, 10th or 11th. Something like that, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're almost, almost in the middle of March. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to bring up a true story that happened this week concerning my very large, fast-growing Facebook group uh, called Progressive Discussions. And I, I had to change the name because of what happened. <laughs> okay, this is what happened. I had... Wait, first, when? How long ago? Week? This day, happened. Two this ago, happened two when? days ago. Right. Okay. My group, my political group, which was very, very active. I mean, people were debating back and forth, sometimes arguing, fighting, uh, posting a lot of hard-hitting information uh, about world politics, national politics, uh, things in Washington, um, uh, things that people are not aware that's happening, like conspiracy theory. Uh, topics and uh, just a lot of a lot of dirt that you can only get on internet news so the group is going really well um, of course you know when you have a lot of members you get your share of undesirables that get in there to try to antagonize people you know, that's you know creative discussion and right banter I guess they right. have their right the right to their views Absolutely. That, that's so, why you my, should welcome that, and you do. Yeah, that's why my groups are uncensored. I don't believe in censorship. No, no. it's it's bad. Okay, it takes it, it eventually takes away everyone's freedom. Censorship. 
So what happened was I had well over 800 members. I, I, I built it up from 200 members, which was like that for a long time, to, to over 800 members and growing. Overnight, this past week, uh, the early this week, practically overnight, I went from 800 plus members down to only three members. You're kidding me. Now, there's no, there's no way that that's a Facebook glitch. To me, that's no glitch. That's hacking, sabotage, because how could a simple glitch remove hundreds of members from a successful group? Do you have a group? way to re-reach these people? The ones that were most active, I, re I reached them, I explained to them, I apologized that I did not kick how can, them. How can this be done? I told them, I don't want, you know, a few of them came to me and says, did you kick me out of the group? I says, no. I says, no way did I kick you so out of the group. This is almost a form of censorship. Yes. They don't want you and your people talking to they don't, one another, really. They, so, somebody, it's not good. Some entity did not like the massive amounts of truth that were being circulated on the group. Who do you think it could be? We can only guess. We, there's a few suspects, but, no, but we don't saying, have evidence. I'm not saying conspiracy, but do you, could it be government? U.S. government, foreign government, or Facebook, it might be? or Facebook corporate, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, if Bill, that's the case, why not just come out and contact you, like the music industry does, saying you can't use our song because you're not paying a royalty fee. Please come Why not come and say, we, we don't want you doing this unless blah, blah, blah. But be upfront and forward. Don't hide and yeah. censor you, in essence. Or, yeah. If it happens to destroy, I don't know why. Yeah, if it happens to be the power to be, at least, it to at least say, look, you can't, you can't have an uncensored group. Well, also, what are you afraid of? Or what are you afraid of? Right. So, I mean, we can only guess as as to. You have no ideas. Uh, we only have suspects, but we don't have any evidence. So, uh, but not personal suspects that you know. It's groups. Uh, there were there were a few so-called trolls that we, they call them on the internet. Trying to uh, like a spy. It's a sabotage. Like trying to spy and see what you, your reactions might be. Well, it's a person who goes into a group and starts pushing people's buttons, trying to get under your skin. Can you give examples of what they said or tried to do, say, to get under your skin? Well, they start off by debating you and which telling is, you you're wrong, which is, what you which want. is fine, it's fine, yeah, I mean, uh, but they usually have no proven evidence to support their opinion. They just resort to name calling. Uh, so don't do that, it's don't do that. Be, on, be honest, have intelligent conversations. Right. Don't agree with me if you don't want to, but let's talk about this. Any, whatever topic it is. Yeah. Like, like name for instance, calling is wrong. Like for instance, I give you an example. The, uh, the, the the show was it Cosmos with the uh, quantum physicist with the with the, 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 the real good black young young yeah. black gentleman he's excellent he's, he's outstanding excellent. and uh, and uh, yeah. Mishio and the Japanese physicist is excellent too Mishio yes 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 um, uh, this was done by Seth MacFarlane by the way he produced this Cosmos really this is production thirteen so, episodes so what happened was there was a big debate over the the, the right wing fundamentalist creationists are very offended by his show because they are creationists who believe uh, God created the uh, universe and the, and the planet Earth. Your faith or belief is so strong, what are you afraid of? Yeah, well, well they believe the Earth is not 5,000 years old or 6,000 years old. They believe it's billions. Uh, no, they, I'm sorry. Well, that, no, it's the other way around. Older. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's not five or six. I'm sorry. I'm we're, sorry. We're a lot the, older than that. The, the creationists believe the Earth was cre was created, and and the universe was created like five or six thousand years ago. By who? They can't prove it. It's, but it's kind of funny how ancient aliens, a phenomenal show, series, yes. TV show, can back up everything they say. They say with great great evidence. Why don't these religious people show and yeah. back things up with evidence? They don't. Right. It's Faith. We discussed this before on your yes. show. What is faith? Faith is hope. Faith is not fact. I'd like to know the truth, the fact. Don't just say it's because it's what I believe in. 
That tells me nothing. Not what I believe in. Right. You believe in she or he or anybody around. See, not, no, I want fact. Right. Can you give me fact? Now, Can you back up your faith absolutely. with fact? That's what I want. And why do you get mad when I, not you, but why to anybody? Why do you get mad when I ask you that? Because you're, you're, you're like challenging their... Well, so what? Ideology. So? So what? But they have no evidence. What if it's so strong? Show me the proof. Now, what happened if was... If your ideology and your faith is so strong and you have proof, what are you really believing in if, if you've never seen the proof? I'd like to know. Wouldn't everyone love to... No, I'd know. I, I'm wrong. I, I was going to say, wouldn't everyone lo love to know the truth? No. I think a lot of people are very afraid to know the actual truth truth because it would really shake up their little belief faith world and that would shock a lot of people their little fantasy world will get their yeah, bubble will get burst so together. many are playing ostrich they want to bury their heads in the sand and they think nothing else is going around pretend nothing's going on they don't realize the bulk of your body sticking out of that hole in the sand it's only your head that's down there it's so hard to talk to the human being sometimes it's, no. it's amazing how some of the, and I hate to say, say this, because people are entitled to their faith, but they are so overly, but they try to push it on everybody. But they're the only ones, basically, that can't back it up with any facts. They can't. Yeah, and and it's, it's odd. It's, it's, it's well, like the, the great rock group from the early 70s, Blind Faith. Blind Faith. That's what it is. And they, uh, And why, why do you have blind faith? It's the right way I was raised. Ever heard of free thinking? You have your own mind. Independent you free thinking. If you were raised by a series of a series of a mom and dad of killers, did you go out and be a killer? They didn't know. I mean, come on, stop using the excuses, people. Yeah, well, well, George Carl, uh, George Carlin, and Frank Zappa used to preach the same things we're talking about right now. Independent free thinker. Where are the people that have a, a backbone in their own mind? And, they're, and, and, you know, and, and the thing is... I the hardest thing is to a religious person to talk to. They get angry yes. when you challenge they them. They get offended, right. I don't understand why. If your faith is that strong, you should have no problem. They seem to be the ones that are so fanatical, they get mad if you challenge. And don't give me the excuse God is everywhere. Okay, prove that to me, please. I hope you're right. I hope God is everywhere. I don't know. Can you prove it to me? You know, Please. The, and the, I'm asking. And the famous quantum physicist has evidence where they don't. They, they just don't. simply well, don't. Well, again, ancient aliens were the most phenomenal shows ever created. They won't accept that. They back everything up. They show you drawings, writings, this and that. Yeah. You can't argue with them. And you know they get. You know where they like to get pissed off? They get a lot of FaceTime on Fox News. Who does? These fundamentalists. Oh, I think mentioned the aliens. No, no, the fundamentalists that the creationists. Fanatics. Fanatics. The religious fanatics. And a religious fanatic, in essence, yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm more towards right. They're basically right. You know, right there is a cult. They are a cult. They're fanatics. Because it's not has nothing to do it's with the their Bible. way or no way. Well, they they want to bang the shoe yeah. on the get on the, the, the podium again. They want to. Uh, they don't want gay people to have any rights at all. Why not? Or a woman's body, a woman. Could. I love my country. I strongly believe in the Constitution, the right to pursue happiness for everybody. You're gay. I'm not. But if if it makes you happy, go you for it. You have to respect them for it. I do. I don't care if you're gay or not. They're not I, tolerant. They're not tolerant. That's, people, you know. that's not any true God. Yeah. The, the preachers or should teach to love all. Not hatred. And yeah. this hatred. They're, sadly, so much of religion is perhaps the most hypocritical. Right vice on earth is religion it really is yeah, sad yeah. they are fanatics and they shape everything to be to their way of thinking organized not religion, a reality yeah. organized it's almost religion. like organized crime in essence yeah. you know? it's, oh. a, it's more about power it seems like it's more about power no, than it's about fear they're afraid they don't want anything outside of their realm of thinking you think outside their realm you're nuts you're crazy that's how they look at it. Go towards your right to life first. 
Uh, tell me where this makes sense. You're a right to life, but you bomb abortion clinics and kill. How does that make you a right to life when right. you're killing, taking a life? Or the we, we, the human being lives with so much hypocrisy. Yeah, it's sad. They're, it's sick. They're playing God. Is what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. They're, uh, yeah. selective. And and you know, it's my way or kill. And you know, there's no proof that a fertilized egg or an embryo is a human being. Well, whether it is or not, it's sad to see a life taken of any form. Uh, we could go on and on. Like, yeah. uh, people say, do you believe in uh, right to life or a woman's right? I said, I've told people honestly, and they can't argue. I said, I'm for both. I can't choose a side. I think a woman has every right, yet by the same token, I hate to see a life taken. I don't know what to say. I'm on both sides of that issue. Yeah, I'm for both. Shoot me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I love kids, I love people, I love animals a whole bit, but a woman has a right to to see a life taken. What else can I tell you? Yeah, they, they just, uh, it's almost like fascism, their attitude. It's, it's uh, my way or no way. It's my way or no way. So they, next time they're going to start the bookstores and start burning books too, like Nazi Germany too, I guess. Well, you know, they want? I heard in Alabama, uh, which is a fundamentalist state, that you can't have a sex shop, they're illegal. It's illegal you for mean lingerie and, and dil videos and dildos. Dil no, even dildos. You can't. You, the woman cannot purchase a dildo in the state of Alabama because of their, their well, religion. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly cheap. If you want to hire me, I'm, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Oh, we're gonna get letters now because I said I made a joke. But the, so, the uh, thing is um, that it's it's a mistake to combine church and state. They should never be combined. If if a religious leader influences politics, don't you think these churches should be taxed like everybody else? Yes. Like if Pat Robertson influences a pol politics, a religious leader, let's say, uh, and you start forcing your beliefs and your religion on other people, make them pay taxes. Uh, you're much of a politician if you're catering to them because you need their votes. I said, I don't need your votes. Or their contributions. When it comes to money, I said, look, I don't need this headache. I don't need this. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, I don't go for this. I believe in freedoms. Yeah. And not what you preach. You know, said, what, it's just wrong. You know George Carlin said something real clever. Can I interrupt you real quick? Hold the Carlin thought. Jimmy Swagger, years ago, preaches all this, gets called twice coming out of a hotel. Ah, I have seen you. Forgive me for I have sinned. He did it again. What he, he, he so, picked up hookers. Who's a yeah, prostitute? Prostitute. Who's, yeah. who's a hypocrite here? Now he's the one that got caught. But what he, about other ones that haven't been caught? But yet? he did it again and again I and said, again. Yeah. But what about other ones that haven't been caught too? That possibly might be doing the same. He used too. to preach that lust is bad, lust is yeah, sin, yeah, I sinful. Know, I know. And I he know. and guess what? People still send him money. I know. I know. You know. Um, so what uh, does that say about, Joe, about Joe, people's thinking? Joe Osteen said that. He had a revival, uh, um, uh, an event. Okay, he's an evangelist. Oh, I love Joel Osteen. He's, he's excellent. Joel Osteen says that six hundred and fifty thousand dollars was stolen. Oh yeah, I heard the whole thing. Now, could you imagine how much money these mega churches make if one event brought in six hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Oh, he gets a lot more than that. I'm Make sure. them pay taxes. He never talks about helping the f poor or feeding poor children Wait, in Africa. Why, why don't they pay taxes? Because of that law about churches are exempt. Why? Religious organizations why? are exempt. Yeah, why not? Why are they exempt? Who I have no this? idea. Who sort of this? That's a good question. What about other organizations that should be exempt as well? Why religion only? What if you're an atheist or an agnostic organization? Why aren't you exempt? Yeah. That's an anti-religion organization, per se. So, uh, so who started this? What's well, an organization with a belief? A religious organization, primarily, they're the ones that can afford to be taxed. So why aren't they being taxed? It's true. Who starts all this stuff? And, and, and when was it started? And by whom? I'd like to know. Yeah, well, and why does the money have to go towards the mega church? Why doesn't it go to feeding poor children or, well, I think, or homeless people? I think people? like Joel Osteen is the good ones and the better ones, bigger ones. I think they do an awful lot to feed and help clothe. I mean, philanthropical? I think uh, they 
Yeah, 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 I think they do a lot. There's a lot of big charities were caught. Well, for, a lot of charities for fraud, are all fraud, fraud, fraudulent. Yeah. Things too. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on, like like twenty five cents on a dollar goes to the poor. No, uh, well, I've heard even ten cents on a dollar goes, goes goes to the poor. Some of these, it's that low. But uh, let me tell you what Carlin once said. He says, Pete, if you tell people about a man who lives in the sky that created the universe and the, and the planet and the, and the earth, they they'll believe it right away. If, if you tell them the, the the paint is wet, they have to go touch it to see if it's wet. In other words, they'll believe. So like the beliefs, they they'll, they'll believe what they want to. Believe. They believe what they want to believe. They 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 won't take your your word about the paint being wet, so they have to touch it. But they'll automatically believe of a man who lives in the sky and created everything. That's right. That's right. So people it's are like really the people doing these motivational seminars to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Is that Tony Robbins? For example. The, and others will be, say, I, uh, I see so much untapped potential here. Pinocchio. That's BS. Remember the commercial? Pinocchio? Yes, you're right. I forgot about that one. And the other one was, I forget who it was. You have potential. Right, everybody has, no, that's not true. Not everybody does have potential. No. And no, not I, all I, children I, are meant to be successful no. either. And I agree with that guy that gave the commencement ceremony at some college about two years ago. And boy, he hit it right on the head and people applauded him. He looked out to the, the graduates said, none of you are special. He said, let's stop the crap. Make yourself special, but stop this motivational stuff that you are all special. Go out in the world and do this. You're not. Make yourself special. It's like what they say: uh, a Special Olympics where, where you know, handy, all the handicapped kids. We have the special Olympics. You're all winners. No, you're not all winners. No, you're not all winners. No, no, no. no. You're not all. Well, there was a company years ago. I forgot, well, a very major company. I'm not sure who it was. It's one of the Olympics thing. They got slammed for the commercial because of stress, motivation, training, and training, and training. And they said, hey, you don't train to win silver. That's true. You got, they got slammed for that. No, you think the everybody goal. Said, everybody says, you win silver, you're a loser, you're this, you're that, you're that. And they said, you're missing the whole point. Yeah, but, like, but do you train to be second? No. Do you train to be third? No. Bronze. You train to be number one. Gold. Gold. There's how sensitive and thin skin we are. But there's no shame in being in it there's and no getting shame. silver and getting silver. There's no shame. But you don't train no. to win silver. No, you train to win gold. It's like saying, I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best. I don't want to be first. I'm gonna settle I'm gonna try for second. Have you ever heard an athlete see that? Yeah. No, no. When this hey, I'm just happy to be at the Super Bowl. I don't care if we win. We're here. We're second best if we lose. Hey, when you the, ever hear that? When the CEO of Sony changed everything around, you think he wanted to be second best or third best? He wants to be the best electronics company in the world. Hopefully. Exactly. They all do. They all do. And now you have the Koreans that have come in in the past decade or more with a oh, forget a, it. A, a LG and a Sa Samsung. Sam Sun, yeah. yeah, their cars, Kia and Kia and Hyundai. Come on, these are incredible products. The quality is incredible. That's the spirit of competition. And they're, they're relatively young companies. Yeah, they are. So those are more examples. You know, I mean, but the thin uh, skinness of this, I forget who it was, getting flack and was saying, hey, you don't train to win silver. <laughs> what is? I said you gotta be kidding me. Well, you, What's wrong with you, that? You can't go into it with a silver and bronze mindset. You can go in hopefully to win number, be number one. Yes. You, get, you go for the gold. Oh, but the companies say go for the gold. They don't get flack, do they? You know? So here we go. There we go. But Bottom line is you can't win for losing. You can't You'll win never satisfy everybody. Everybody's offended, and this word offended. That I have no idea what it even means because nothing offends me. Well, that's like that's less. how some people were on my on my group. Yeah, you're they, they, they were afraid. What does it feel like to be offended? I have no idea. What does that mean? No. You're offended. What do you mean? What's it feel like? Yeah. Nothing offends me. You can call me any name in the book, and I'm like, I'm sorry, you feel that way. You know I how many? You know how many people personally message me from the group saying, telling me to kick out the other person because they offended them. 
No, let them have their say. I says, debate them. have right to speak. Debate them. You have a right to respond. I mean, nobody has to agree with everything, you know, you say. It's not my way the highway. No. It's my opinion. I'll hear yours, too. I And they got mad because they says, oh, I refuse to walk on eggshells in life. I no. refuse to walk on eggshells. Challenge them and fight and argue back. You can't, you know. But it's, it's true. Not. You have so many people that are on eggshells. And if you do offend them, they pout. They walk away from you. They turn tail. They tail between legs and walk away. Rather than sit in yeah. front and argue back. Confront. You know, why do you have to run? from because I don't agree with you you run from me now yeah. I had this woman who was whining all the time that people were debating her I says well that's what the group's about I says you know discussion yes I had a friend a couple years ago female yeah asked me something you know, I th you think I will ever get married blah, 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 blah. because she didn't like my response or my answer she got mad at me and I hung up she called back later and said what I said, well, you hung up on me. I said, why did you ask me the question? Why ask me a question if you may not like my answer? Yeah. You said, do I think you will ever get married? I said, no, I do not. I said, in all honesty, you think about only yourself, you're materialistic, and you're cold. You don't exude warmth towards men. I said, no, I don't think you ever will. Is that like a woman? Is that wrong? Man? You ask, Jimmy, if you ask me, you're going, would you want an honest answer? Yes. You want me to lie to you. Otherwise, I won't. I want to ask you. And she got mad, hung up on me. Isn't that like um, uh, a woman who says to you, uh, "How do I look in this dress? Uh, have I gained any weight?" And then if you tell her, <laughs> if you tell her yes, she gets Thank pissed you, off. They get pissed ask, off. Why did you ask me? Why did you right. ask me? It's the same. <laughs> it's the same thing as a woman showing a lot of cleavage, and and the second you stare at it, yeah. for one My second, my eyes are up here. Well, Darling, I'm sorry, but you look lovely. I mean, really. I mean, is that so bad? I mean, they know they dress that way dress that to way get attention, to get right? attention, but when you get the attention, you don't want the attention. They get pissed well, off. that makes a lot of sense. So, I don't know. The human race is illogical. You know? It's getting worse, though. Yeah. But, but, I mean, getting, getting back to the group, I, I, I have a strong feeling that it was hacked. And sabotage because how do you lose hundreds and hundreds of members over a malfunction in the, in the number count? It's been it's been it's been over 800 for a while, and it's like all of a sudden three members. Yeah, something's wrong yeah. here. So now I change the name of the group to it's not progressive discussions. It's called uncensored. Yeah, so you can't keep changing the name. That will confuse people yeah. after a while. Well, I want. I, I wanted to take the word progressive out because I was getting all these uh, pacifists that come in that are afraid to get offend anybody. They were afraid to offend anybody, and, and they, they, they don't no believe back, no, back no. They don't believe in honest debate, and I, and I want to be about honest debate. My got to be, got to be. You know, free, open exchange of ideas and opinions. So we just said a few moments ago. You asked me how how you look at that dress. You tell the truth, they get mad at you. You think I'll ever get married? I said, no. She got mad and hung up. On damn if you do and damn if you don't. I said, well, I said, why did you ask me? Can't win. You just can't win. You, know, you just can't win. I give you a truthful, honest answer as your true friend, and you got mad at me. Well, okay. So be it. Yeah, well, do you want do you want phoniness? Do you want me to pretend? It's like when the I, I, let's say her name. Her name is. But let's just say her name is Sally. That's, Sally, do you want an honest answer or me to lie to you? You know, see what they yeah. say. It's like it's like the woman who says to me, uh, James, how have you been? And I go and I go, I'm hang, I'm Life hanging. Lights. I know. I said I'm, I'm I'm hanging in there. And she goes, you're only hanging in there. I says, no, I'm really on top of the world. I'm really peachy keen and hunky dory. No, I would say yes, but the noose is getting tighter and tighter. But hanging in there means exactly. What does that mean? It means nothing. It means it it's, means, a, it's a stupid answer. It really. means that you're 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 getting by. You're surviving. It's a bland answer. It's, it's like, a horrible answer. I, I'm hanging in. Now, there. if I say tell I'm, the truth, I'm doing I'm doing shitty. Yeah, tell the truth. A lot of people don't want to hear it. Then why do you ask how how are you doing? But right? that's you should. I tell the people that like bites. What does bite? Yeah. Tell the truth. I'm great. How are you? I have unlimited untapped potential. <laughs> uh, 
tell the truth. You know what? They're blowing yes. sunshine up each other's ass. You know why? Because they don't want to be bothered. So just brush it off by saying, I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. Yeah. Platitudes. Well, I told you, platitudes. I told you, entertainer Cher is sick and tired of people lying to her, saying, oh, I'm great. I'm great. Tell me how you're really doing, she said. Well, you know how I feel. I always tell you, life sucks. I've lost everything. You know my stories, my friend. <laughs> it sucks. And there are people who have lost their mm -hmm. Tell the truth. I know somebody. That, I know somebody that had a business. I'm that, hurting. I've told yeah. you that I'm hurting inside. Yeah. You know, going through these lawsuits. The whole business. Be Listen, honest. Tell the truth. I know someone that had a business, a thriving business, that because of faulty wiring in the um, in the in the building, lost. All his inventory. What, fire? Fire. Lock, stock, and barrel. When? How he, long ago? he didn't have insurance. Oh. Somebody from uh, Mississippi. From the state of Mississippi. He didn't have the. Maybe he couldn't afford. So when the, you called him and said, How are you doing? He said, Oh, I'm fine. Never been better, Jim. Lost everything. Oh, he comes clean and says he lost everything. It sucks. He didn't have insurance, not because he was careless. I don't think he can afford the, to have the liability insurance. Well, anyway, thank you very much, oh, William H. Moore. Good talk, buddy. Thank you for being with us. Uh, it is St. Patrick's Day weekend, and uh, thank you for joining us for Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Anytime. Okay. All right. Talk to you later, everybody. Bye-bye now. Take care. Everybody loves that bye-bye. To me, it's nothing because it's me, I guess. What's going on? This has been a Mega Life 21 production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises. Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you well, lost, lost another argument, argument with the conservative. conservative. Right-wing right -wing Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He, he screamed and yelled. yelled. He brought, brought out the Bible. Bible. He thumped it. it. He quoted he scripture, scripture to you. And you were lost, lost because, because you came at him with, with facts. facts. Nothing, Nothing but, but facts. facts. And, and you expected that that would, uh, that would that would make, make you look good. good. That, that would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the the argument, argument. You, know you know why you're going to lose your next argument, argument because you don't, don't read censored censored a 30, 30 year old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative, conservative. read censored and you'll have all the ammunition you need every, every time you get into an argument with a right wing, wing conservative, conservative uh, uh, so called so Christian, Christian. Censored. censored that's, that's all, all you need, need. read it and, and defeat a conservative, conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no reason even after all the promises, then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much.
William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with the conservative right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost? lost the argument, you know, you know why you're going to lose your next argument, because you don't read censored. Censored, censored a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. conservative. Read censored, 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 and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of, of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com on the printable order form page and with your gift to support this work get your free annual subscription this is james p madonna of mega life 21 the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet yeah Yes, indeed. It is very uh, sick and selfish when a, uh, a mother who wants to commit suicide tries to kill her children. Like the woman in Florida that tried to drive her vehicle with her kids in it into the ocean. Yes. And actually thinking that that was the only way to get out of an abusive relationship. Yeah, but, it, I mean, uh, why take innocent people with you, especially children? That's what usually happens when neurotics or psychotics and etc. make decisions. It's all about self. That's, that's... Aye, 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 me, that, me, me. That's the ultimate selfishness is when you, you take innocent people with you. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the greed of... Uh, like the kings of old and the elites of old, Or the, the right-wing Republican uh, elitist corporate CEOs today. The ultimate in selfishness. They don't care if they take the people, uh, animals, the, the environment, the planet itself with them. Mm. The poor. They don't care if poor children or millions of poor children are going to bed hungry. What, what do they care? It's... It's, they don't care about polluting our water with yeah. fracking and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, the ultimate, like you said, the ultimate in selfishness, um, like I guess greed at all costs is a form of extreme selfishness to me. And sickness, as Jesse Ventura said. Yeah. Greed. The wanting of more moolah, more money, more moolah, more moolah. It's a sickness. And it's never enough. Well, it's never enough. Nothing is ever enough for them. Uh, do the Waltons have enough? Of Walmart? No, and apparently not. After all the years that they've each been getting uh, $25 billion a year, do they have enough? Does uh, ugly old turtle face Mitch McConnell have enough? From what I hear, he's... Well, he doesn't have enough to buy a modern gun. He had to bring an old uh, blunderbuss almost, blunderbuss almost, onto the CPAC stage when he appeared. 
He's got money to burn. Come on. <laughs> Mr. McConnell and Boner. Unbelievable. Um, um, and the uh, what is it? The governor of Ohio that makes it obvious. Kasich. That the, the one that gives uh, uh, Billy, uh, millions, multi-millions of taxpayers uh, money from Ohio taxpayers to, to the uh, elitist. The corporations and well, that's where it belongs because they're the job creators. But he's not giving his money to them. He's giving the taxpayer, the little guy's money. Well, yeah. Who got the? Uh, uh, who got all the taxpayers' money on uh, Wall Street with the um, uh, financial meltdown? All the Republican. I didn't get none. All the Republican governors do it. Chris Christie has done it. Has taken your money, mm -hmm. taxpayers' money, and given it as presents, gifts, to. The elitists. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to thank uh, our uh, voiceover artist, William H. Moore III, for a hard-hitting interview. I uh, hope you enjoyed it between myself and uh, visiting William Morrow. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, you saw our prom promo, our commercial. Um, now we will go back to the readings of the show, St. Patrick's Day uh, weekend 2014, for uh, uncensored, hard hitting truth. Speaking of Governor Christie. Speaking of the devil, right? <clears throat> he slammed the petty entertainment of Washington politics on Thursday and then proceeded to entertain a South Jersey crowd with his patented mixture of empathy, self-deprecating humor, and fury. I saw him at the, at, the most, at the recent town hall meeting, what he did to that person who challenged him. Sit down and be quiet or get out! I have you removed. I'm done with you. And he walks away. Christie said, charging in the direction of Michael Brian, a 19-year-old Rowan University student and the first of six hecklers escorted from a town hall style event in Mount Laurel. Oh, that's what this article is about? New Jersey. Cool. Ah, how about that? I didn't even know it. We're done with you! At times it seemed as if Christie was is no holds barred uh, pre-scandal self winning over audiences with his blunt spoken style while preaching tough love leadership or the importance of bipartisanship tough love leadership and you the little guy have to make sacrifices it's never Chris Christie and his rich friends you. You have to make sacrifices. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but the very same style and themes that defined Christie's persona in his first term rise to prominence are now being projected for another purpose. To create the aura that he's working hard. Undeterred by the scandal. He's working hard lifting that fork and spoon at the table that has stymied his administration. The governor, who once mocked his erstwhile friend, President Obama, for leading from behind, is now leading from a bunker. Christie, who courted media attention in his first term, hasn't held one for a year. After Thursday's event ended, his office announced Sandy-themed session in South River set for Tuesday. I guess that's this week. Yeah. Coming, coming Tuesday. After St. Pat's Day. Town hall meetings with Chris Christie is very one-sided. Well, yeah, because they're staged. Well, you can't... Like in the old days with Reagan and, and Deaver. They staged everything. What about... What about... 
uh, 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 mission accomplished with Mr. G. W. Bush on the Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, but I thought town hall meetings all stage were supposed to be a place where we the people voiced our our opinions <laughs> and asked questions of our political leaders. Yeah, right. Town hall meeting. Meeting means there's communication between more than one individual or, or representative. That means there's, there are people uh, speaking back and forth, communicating. It's not one-sided. It's not, well, he should change the name to the Chris Christie uh, uh, Stage public show. speaking or, huh? Stage show, Carnival Clown Car. Yeah. Remember the little car where all the clowns get in uh, out of? In the circus? Well, he could be the elephant. The elephant in the room. Without a trunk. Christie has used the highly choreographed, see? Highly choreographed community gatherings to bolster his image as a charismatic governor working to personally help residents tackle problems. That's what the town hall meeting is for Christie. It's, it's for himself. It's a PR stunt, right? Yes. Christie usually opens these events with whatever message he is trying to promote that day. Thursday he announced that the average property tax bill rose 1.7 percent last year, one of the lowest increases in two decades, drawing ruckus applause from the crowd. Oh really? Why didn't he say how he, he, he cut off the elderly and the disabled? From the property tax rebate. All those, um, all those true uh, facts are are censored in the Chris Christie town hall meeting. They're all censored. <clears throat> but Christie did not mention that since taking office, he has scaled back property tax rebates, which Democrats have argued is the equivalent of a tax hike. And who did that tax hike fall upon? As I just said. The elderly and the disabled. Not the rich. Somebody posted, I think it was uh, Martha, last night. Martha Greer or yeah. something or other? She posted something. And I answered her to the effect that... Uh, I saw it. Did you see that where I said uh, something that... Uh, Funneling you know, or siphoning up? Yeah, because, that, uh, you know, the taxes for, for, for those who have the money, ba boom ba boom ba boom and uh, over the years since Reagan, we've screwed that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not like that anymore. They get the money from us, True. and it siphons up. Mm -hmm. After the event, the hecklers said that they had succeeded in making their points that Christie is refusing to address important issues, and that the public is concerned about those issues, even though those who get to ask questions at his events haven't raised them. I don't want Chris Christie to be able to use these town halls to say the people of New Jersey aren't concerned with how he's been spending Sandy money or his involvement in Bridgegate. Unbelievable. Because those people who attend the town halls, he knows, they won't ask them about those things. He's a piece of work, to say the least. Christie hasn't taken questions from the media since January 9th. Gee, I wonder why. When he held a nearly two-hour news conference to announce he had fired Bridget and Kelly. The deputy chief of staff who sent the now infamous email, Time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee! Since that time, Housing and small business advocates have raised questions about the delay in getting federal sanding aid to storm victims. Yeah, it's well over a year! Mm -hmm. They also demanded answers about why Hammerman and Gaynor Inc. or HGI, which was administering the housing program and was the object of numerous complaints, received a ten million dollar payout to terminate its contract early. Well gee, ain't that something? You get paid when you don't do a job. It's 
good. It's a nice job. It's like yeah. a crony job. Yeah. Political crony job. Yeah. Well, that's what it was. I mean, I mean, yeah. Billy Morrow told me that in uh, in, in Ridgewood. New Jersey, where he used to live, there were plenty. Of, there's plenty of crony jobs where people ride around in in, in town uh, vehicles and uh, and just uh, just hang out and goof around. They they don't do any work because they, they they knew somebody in City Hall that gave them a crony job. One of them even takes it, the the Ridgewood town vehicle down to the Jersey Shore when he goes on on trips on vacation and, and uses probably taxpayer money uh, uh, to fill the tank, the gas tank, and of use course. his company vehicle. Of course. C cronyism. The firm is in arbitration with the state, arguing New Jersey has failed to pay $18 million <clears throat> that it owes them. You see that? They get fired from the job that they don't do. They get $10 million, but they want 18 what the hell? Oh, man. The governor on Thursday dismissed the college students, saying their outbursts were to get the attention of the media. It's like, it's like Alex Rodriguez wanting to sue everybody because everybody's wise to him using steroids. Yeah, everybody's telling the truth. Everybody's telling you know, the truth. He wants to sue them for telling the truth. So a Alex Rodriguez, A. Rod wants to sue everybody. Well, that's what corporations want now. <laughs> they won't. Want, they don't want you to ever be able to criticize them, to tell the truth about them, or etc. No exposés, right? No exposés. No nothing like that. No. These folks coming in here today, ginned up for their own partisan purposes. See. They're getting exactly what they want, he said. They don't want an answer from me. If they wanted an answer from me, they'd wait and ask their question. And I'd give them an answer. They want attention. Chris Tree drew thunderous applause. Really? As he turned back to taking questions from the crowd. After the heckling stopped, Collingswood resident William Skip Brockner raised his hand to ask the governor about gun control. But first, he told Christie, he wanted to apologize for those who disrupted the event. Oh, you mean people Isn't that, that magnanimous people thing? that disagreed with him, who yeah. challenged him? Yeah. Okay. While Christie fielded questions from a group of parents upset about a Burlington County charter school being closed and a woman who asked why the governor didn't use federal funds to promote health care available to New Jersey residents, he managed to go without calling on the dozens of affordable housing advocates, environmentalists, and union-backed New Jersey Working Families Alliance supporters in the room. Well, they would have gave him the wrong answer, wouldn't they? Well, actually, the right answer. Yeah. Wrong for him. Representatives from housing advocacy groups hope to ask Christie about the state's delay in adopting new housing rules, something the New Jersey Supreme Court mandated. You know, the Supreme Court of New Jersey mandated the Mount Laurel decision way, way, way a long time ago about affordable housing. Every state is supposed to have such a certain amount of affordable housing. And then they changed it. Not the states, I mean the, the, the towns. And then the towns are allowed to actually give their, the amount of affordable housing that they should have to another town. What the hell? And they didn't consider mobile homes and trailers affordable housing for low The income. only legitimate form low of affordable people. housing is mobile home. Well, because it, because you own it. Because you own the trailer. You don't you don't you know you don't own an apartment. Yeah. The poor can't buy a condo or a co op. But in towns and cities it's building up which is worth more money, not spreading out. So, you know, a office building that goes up 
It's worth more than a trailer park. That's all this. That's why we'll never get affordable. That's all this world sale. needs is another tall building. Hey, is that one in uh, Hasbrook Heights there on Route 17 uh, South ever filled up? That was built during the Reagan administration. Hold on, hold on, man. All right, what, what you mean a uh, where the uh, where the uh, the uh, welfare or food oh, stamps no, used no, to be? No, oh, used to be. Used to be. Oh wait, what you mean before it went to Rochelle Park? Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't no, remember that far back. Uh, no, Hackensack. Right? Hackensack. 241 Moore Street. I'm not familiar. All I know is I saw photographs of um, housing uh, for the homeless, and there, there's one not too far from us in Bergen County, New Jersey, that is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful looking. Uh, but uh, what's happening is a lot of the homeless are hanging out outside doing drugs and and uh, and, and and throwing their trash on on the ground and making it hard for all the, the the nice poor homeless people that don't do that. They're making life tough on. It's always the the bad apples. You know something uh, that make it tough on everyone else. Remember, I said last time that uh, Lakewood. Yes. They. Evicted them? Evicted From the woods? Out of there. I mean, yeah, but the other day, uh, the one guy was there and his uh, tent or whatever it was caught on fire. How the hell so do people you, are still there. How the hell do you get evicted from the woods? You know? What, do they come in and say, well, squirrels and uh, uh, groundhogs, you can stay. Birds, you can stay. People, you're, and your tents, you gotta leave. Where the hell do they go? They have a better solution than... Well, you know, it's like the Republican conservatives who love the embryo and the fetus. But when the kid comes out, they don't give a damn anymore. But they don't have any solutions That's to, for the correct. problem. That's correct. That's why. You, you don't care where they go. You criticize and you put them down, but do you have a solution to the problem? Yes. What are your alternatives? Their solution is go get a job. Yeah, where? What? Where, what, where, what? Or die. Well, that's the easy way. You know, like the people that don't like the Republicans that do not like Obamacare. All right, where, where do the poor go when they get sick? <clears throat> well, when you think about they it. They go actually where they've been going in the emergency rooms, but Ch then the Republicans care. have to pay for that. Well, they have, they have uh, hospitals before Obamacare. Ho some hospitals had charity care. Maybe all of them in uh, in New Jersey, and you apply. You know, you, you prove that you're you're a po folk. Well, you can't apply until you have a condition. You got to run up a bill. Yeah, you got you have to generate. See, this is what's this That's is what's, what is stupid. It's stupid. You have to generate a bill. Correct. A hospital bill first in the ER, let's say, yeah. or outpatient clinic. Then you apply for the charity care. Uh, or Medicaid, or both, you know, but uh, if you're eligible. Obamacare is wonderful for people who can't afford their own health insurance. I think it's great. In certain aspects, it, it has its good parts. It's not perfect. Exactly. Like, i give you an example. It, but, it, yeah. if Mr. Obama and a good group of Democrats were not corporatists, they could actually fix it and make it damn near perfect. I'll give you an example. But they won't. Obamacare in New Jersey. Let's say you have Horizon of New Jersey or United Healthcare. When you receive the HMO network booklet, it's very limited as to who you can see. Very limited. There's no there's no dermatologists in there, there's no you know uh, um, chiropractors in that book there's no network you have to go to your designated primary care physician and he has to determine whether or not you need to see a specialist and he has to recommend somebody and of course that specialist would have to take United Healthcare or Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield um, but it's very limited the booklet you know and it's not a PPO it's an HMO but, you know, like my sister told me, even a PPO 
you cannot just see any old doctor that takes Horizon or you know it has to be in a network they got to be in network and there lies the problem wouldn't it be great if they paid for massage therapy with or without the happy ending <laughs> Thursday's meeting won overwhelmingly by a vote of 8,696 to his Democratic opponents, 4,341. The housing laws stem from a 1975 state Supreme Court ruling that found the township was discriminating against African Americans, paving the way for requirements that all communities provide, that was Mount Laurel, that was the decision that the Supreme Court made back then, it's, it's been, uh, to try to fix affordable housing, Yeah, but they didn't. After Thursday's meeting, several said they weren't surprised that Christie did not speak about the issue. It's not surprising he didn't address it, as he seems to have no ideas but to delay, said Stacy Berger executive director of the Housing and Community Development Network of New Jersey, which represents affordable housing developers. It's unfortunate because our state's economy really needs a strong housing market <coughs> to rebound. Christie stressed during the event that he didn't know any of the people he had called on and said that in the past his staff has handed the microphone to people who didn't agree with him. I have had plenty of people who are angry with me, don't like me, who I've called on. Believe me, I didn't call on them on purpose, he said, drawing some laughs. I call on people randomly. Sometimes they like me, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're neutral. Michael Brien, a 19-year-old Rowan sophomore from Belmar, was the first student to yell out a question. He wanted to know why the state economic development authority has distributed only $13 million of $100 million available in grants to small businesses hit by sand. Is that the question that caused him to get yelled at? Ah, he hit a raw nerve with uh, with Chris Christie. Yeah. With Balloon Boy. He hit a raw nerve. Ah. He noted that it is about half of what the state spent on tourism ads. They didn't show the question in the news. That featured the governor and his family at the Jersey Shore. That's very, oh really, very peculiar that the news did not show the question being asked. They only showed the part of uh, Christy throwing yelling at him, throwing him out. Yeah. See how the media is? Yeah. To me, the whole thing was kind of like a PR stunt, Brian said afterwards. It was. These town halls he goes to, upper middle class neighborhoods with his supporters, he knows no one from Mount Laurel is going to ask anything about Bridgegate or Sandy. Yeah. This other person tried to ask Christie why African Americans and Latinos receive disproportionately less housing aid than white applicants. An issue the Fair Share Housing Center has alleged based on its analysis of public records. Did Christie answer that question? The Housing Advocacy Group is suing the state over its affordable housing guidelines. No, it don't look like it. Anthony Curitan, president of the Bergen County NAACP, also made the trip to Burlington County to ask Christie about the lack of San Diego going to minorities. San Diego, the lack of the lack of San Diego going to anybody. Anybody really. but a crony. 
who lost their homes. Yeah. Minorities are not getting the attention they should be getting in Bergen County. Puritan of Englewood said, after the event, suggesting Christie hold a meeting with North Jersey storm victims. I think, overall, Bergen County is not getting the attention it should be getting from the governor's office. If he had the chance for a second question, Curitan said he would have asked Christie if he plans to nominate an African American to the state Supreme Court after declining to renominate Justice John E. Wallace Jr. in 2010. Now, what, what MS, being that the local um, American media in our area the, did not show the questions being asked, uh, I think uh, MSNBC's Rachel Maddow or Ed Schultz or one of them should show the question being asked and Christie's, Chris Christie's reaction to have people make a decision whether or not they want to support this man in 2016. Because he, the way he's that been behaving, happen. the way he's been behaving, it's almost like he has no political aspirations for 2016, like he doesn't care. You know, the way he's been... Well, that's not how he sounded at the CPAC conference. Because when he's talking to conservatives, they, they turn a blind eye to the reality of what the Republican politician is really doing or saying. They don't yeah. care. They don't care about the facts. <clears throat> no, they don't care about the facts. And of course, as I said before, they get their policies, policies through by stealth, by lying, absolute lying. Like like uh, what you call in Wisconsin, he actually lied Scott on the campaign trail. I see he never said anything about doing the things that he has done. Yeah, you see, the teabagger, uh, redneck fools, they vote in the Republican governor, or or congressman, or whatever, or senator. They vote in. Let's let's just say the governor. They vote in the Republican governor. Okay, um, like Scott Walker. In Wisconsin, Chris Christie in New Jersey. Rick Scott in yeah. Florida. I Rick Scott in Florida. They vote him in. Then, after all the skeletons fall out of the Republicans' closet and, and after they hurt a lot of people, the little guy, not, not, never the rich, okay, then they re elect them, the same idiots re elect them again for a second and last term. And now, when 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 they're reelected, they figure, hey, you're hey. stuck. You're stuck with me for another four years, so I'm going to yeah. really be a greedy. And you like what I'm doing? A greedy, obnoxious. Uh, I mean, I mean, if they're if they have no plans to run for senator or for president, I guess they can figure, well, hey, you're stuck with me for four more years, so I'm really going to do whatever I feel like doing. Well, Scott Brown, who ran in Massachusetts against Elizabeth Warren, uh, I think he's going to try to uh, run for Congress in New Hampshire. A real carpetbagger. You know, moving from whatever yeah. <laughs> state or whatever has the opportunity. No loyalty to the state. Exactly. Just, it's all about them. Yeah. You know, uh, p uh, career politicians, which are the worst. That's it. <clears throat> um, I mean, I know what they are, and I know they're, they're, they're vile and corrupt, but what shocks me even more than the politicians being who and what they are is the fact that the American voter keeps on re-electing them. What is wrong with people in America today? I don't understand how their brains operate. And in 2014... Now, with the election, if the Republicans get four senators, four that's it. You kiss that's it. it. We can kiss our... They our own two. Yeah. The Senate and the House. And you know they all stick together when they vote. So that means we, the poor, can kiss their asses. Nothing will get done. 
the poor can kiss their asses goodbye. That's right. All you got left is uh, the Obama's pen, but with 60 Republican senators, they can override it. Could they override executive uh, order? No, that's something different. Okay, so they can override it. Override, you mean Obama's veto? Correct. O override his veto. And it will become law. And uh, they will end, I, will, I, get, I, I promise that they, the Republicans, if they had control of the Senate and the House, they would end the uh, subsidy to Obamacare and everybody, uh, the poor, would just have to uh, cease to exist. Exactly. Exactly. Because the, the churches and your relatives and your friends can't afford to help you. You know, and if you and if you live in a tent in the woods, they want to kick you out. Well, obviously, yeah, that's exactly right. It, those things aren't working now. I mean, you know, life is bad enough to live in a tent. I mean, but where's they, the churches there? The, <laughs> See, they can't handle the job. The the church the churches are lucky they can raise money to fix the leak in their roof. Speaking of the churches, let alone help. Support the poor. What? We mentioned this the other day, I believe on Wednesday. Joel Osteen. Yeah, he's been in the news. Been in the news because. Got robbed. Somebody robbed his. What do you call that basket where you put your money? Collection. Collection basket of $600,000. 650 I think. No, it's 600000 So The point is, that's whether, what, whatever it was, could you imagine? that's a lot of money. For a counterfeit Christian. That's only one Joel Osteen event. That's correct. Could you imagine what he grosses annually? Correct. For for having a big tax fake, free, a big fake saccharine sweet smile like the Cheshire Cat, talking about not about scripture but about no. prosperity. Prosperity, riches, money, 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 money. God wants you to be rich, my son. And richer. And he wants me to be richer. <laughs> and when you need to tithe uh, to me, to me, Joel, or Joel Osteen, yeah. yeah, no, don't. He never talks about helping starving children or the homeless or whoever the poor. No, it's always about God wants you to have a better car. He wants yeah. you to have a better house. You know, and it's like, uh, damn. How come man. he never says? And like, he's not paying taxes. How come he never says like uh, with, with the Bible, where like with the. Uh, the old uh, prophets and etc. Cetera, et cetera. God wants you to die for him. He doesn't. Come, he never says something he like that. He doesn't talk about salvation. He doesn't talk about the end times. He doesn't talk about the Book of Revelation. Oh, no. no prosperity preacher is going to talk about the end times. <laughs> no, and you know, and you know what? A, a, a couple females in my family said, "Oh, he's so wonderful and positive. Oh, I want to get his book. He's so positive." He's always, he always has that, that nice smile on his face. Hey, Satan comes as an angel of light. It's what he's saying. It's what he's that saying. That they should be concentrating on, not as person. You question the content of what he's saying. Yeah. He's not quoting Check it out. He's not quoting the Bible. That's correct. You know. So uh, uh and you know, we're not even talking about the obviously phony baloney uh T V evangelists. You know, like a Peter Popoff or, you know, the rest of those. I mean, th there are a lot of charlatans out there, but, you know, uh, you have to... Well, if they call themselves Christians, 99% of them are charlatans. Because only 1% you can actually uh, yeah. say are saying what's in the Bible. Well, if any Republican, you know? uh, if any conservative calls himself a Christian, they're lying to you. Hey, when their mouth moves, they're lying. True. <laughs> Except when they eat. Wow. Except when they eat, like when Chris Christie eats. You know, he's not lying. He's just, he looked pretty chubby at that town hall meeting. He didn't look like he had his stomach stapled. Well, maybe the thirty-five pounds is the only pounds he lost. When he turned sideways, uh, that profile was uh, still there. Pretty obese. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think he's gonna lose weight when when the maggots uh, get to get, 
grow in his body. That's the only way he's going to lose weight. There's something being posted all the time on Facebook about eating something that is uh, releasing parasites in your body that are eating you from the outside, uh, inside out. Yeah. Did you um, read that? I didn't. I didn't get to read it. Yeah, it has nothing to do with amoebas eating your brain. If you go swimming in a lake, no, yeah. it has to do with food. It's the food. Through some f food that we're eating. Well, uh, in New York City, a a young female got um, sick off of uh, eating lunch in this establishment, uh, and then she, and she found a a large insect in the uh, in the food and uh she wants to sue it and it was it the, chocolate uh, covered no it wasn't chocolate covered and uh and the owner was he was an immigrant you know a foreign guy he was saying with a a big grin on his face uh, oh my i you i have nothing but top of the line high quality food in my restaurant don't believe her don't believe her don't believe her hey. so uh you know they do they do grade the health department does grade Eating, uh, in eating, New York? Come e on. eating establishments. In you New hand York. a guy a hundred bucks and you you get okay. This B, there's a, there's a grade A, there's a B, there's a yeah, and so on man. and so on. It goes come down. On, come on, come on. Yeah. In the environment. In the environment, not in where the where polar bears live. Shrinking. <clears throat> Sub zero me. temperatures are normal. Why don't their eyeballs freeze? Interesting. Answer. Winter. What about the nose? They, they got a wet nose like a doggy. For the same reason our own eyeballs don't freeze in frigid temperatures. And why is that? Salinity? Most of the spherical organ is safely contained within a nice warm head. Surrounded by the body heat. Not that polar bears don't have cold weather advantages, such as two thick layers of fur and several inches of blubber. But you may be surprised to learn that they are insulated almost too well. Polar bears overheat more often than they get cold. Interesting. And they don't need to hibernate in the winter for warmth when food is scarce. They reduce their metabolic rate. Even in their Arctic environment they can't run around and delight nature photographers for long. They need to lie down in the snow and cool off. Really? So when they're they're running around uh, hunting for seals, jumping from ice floe to ice, they floe. actually get hot. I would say so. Yes. And, and we're talking about the Arctic Circle. So there, that gives you an example of how well insulated uh, polar bears are. But I, was, I was just saying, what about the tip of their nose? They have a uh, uh, flesh exposed to the wind chill of the Arctic. You know, a uh, nose that. That gets wet and you know it doesn't get frostbite. So anyway, what do you got? What time do we have and what do you got? Uh, well, when are you gonna bang this up? It's uh, ten after four right now. Oh, it is. Do you have a, a short one? I have two short ones. Uh, well, let's hit one and see what happens. Octomom okay. Nadia Suleiman. <laughs> pleaded not guilty on Tuesday. She did porn, I think. Yes, she did. To one count of welfare fraud. And agreed to return to court next month for another hearing if her case isn't resolved. Ugh. With a plea deal before then. Now there's this guy on Fox News, because Fox News, of course, is all out to get rid of Social Security, get rid of Medicare, get rid of uh, uh, welfare, get rid of uh, food stamps, get rid of all the safety net. They don't like Octomom, I bet. Well, they don't use her. Why don't they? They have, they have found this kid, guy, kid, with a beardy and long hair and everything like that. Yeah. And he's supposed to be, uh, supposedly a food stamp 
fraud. Food well, stamp fraud? Well, why hasn't he been, you know, jailed or whatever? But they never explained, at least from what I've heard, they never explained his fraud, per se. What he's actually doing. That is fraud. They don't give you much but, money but for food the, stamps. I, no, they don't. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You can go and you can buy crab legs. You can go and you can buy lobsters. Yeah, sure. You can, I mean, that's Medicaid. What they're saying. I mean, even Medicaid. I mean, if you make more than uh, Christie lowered it. If you make now, if you make more than eight hundred dollars a month, uh, or I think it's below eight hundred, you too wealthy to have a Medicaid card. It, it's somewhere, it's either upper 700s or, or 800. Yeah, you're, you're too wealthy to As have a Medicaid. As I say. So you can afford to go to the doctor? The Republicans do not want you to get off of welfare once you're on it. They will never give you enough moolah to get off of to it. To get off of it. They to be self-sufficient. <laughs> but how do they you... Will come in Give a man a fish for, and he eats for a day. But how uh, how can you be self-sufficient if the jobs are no longer here in America? Ah, you're now piecing it all together, aren't you, son? I did that years ago. Well, okay, because the day is coming. That's what I'm saying. Why are we so dependent, slavishly, upon a corporation for our survival? It's going to bite us in the ass very soon. And never, and I mean never ever, should a scumbag, greedy corporation or any corporation be considered as a person. It never was. There's no law to that effect. No base law to that effect. It's all bullshit that came later. Right. Okay. Corporations. Hey, corporations are, 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 are people, my friend, Mitt Romney said. No, Mitt, Mitt Romney, the guy that loves to fire people from his company. The 38-year-old mother of 14 children Damn. previously pleaded not guilty. Did she have her tubes tied, li a tubal ligation, or no? Or is she still fertile? Good God, if she's still fertile. Shit. Whew. Oh, she, then she can get more welfare. Previously, she pleaded not guilty to three similar felony counts, accusing her of failing to reveal earnings from videos and personal appearances while she cashed welfare checks last year. She is the only celebrity that is on welfare. I mean, the only person who's in the spotlight that is actually on welfare. It comes to think of it, I think, I believe so. It's amazing. Yeah, well, the point is, though, the reason she's being considered a fraud is the same reason with Mr., uh, what was it, James? The guy who found the 850 bucks? Oh, yeah, 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 the homeless guy who, uh, who, who lost his uh, social services because he... He found $850 and turned it into the police. Then, they considered it income. Income, right. Well, right. that's what they considered her video remunerations and etc. See? Yeah, well, she wanted to maintain her welfare checks and receive money from her videos. But how do you improve yourself if you can't do something like that? And do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, well, there's no way she could live on, on the porno. Uh, I don't know. Could you? No. The money from the porno flicks? It's only a one-time thing. That's why I'm saying it's not income. You don't get royalties from Just porno. Just like winning the the lottery. It's so, not income. So you, you do not receive, you're not like part of the Screen Actors Guild. You do not receive residuals, royalties from porn. It's a one-shot payment. Boom. I and would assume it. so, but okay. you never know today because things have changed. Way back when, when I sold books, it was an out and out sale, no real yeah. royalties. I hear the I hear the women get like thirty five hundred or four four grand. Depends on what you got it. Depends on what you want them to do. Right. Prices go up for more extreme. Extremism. Extremes, yeah. You know? yeah. Fetishes and things. 
Um, Authorities say she owes the state about $26,000. Okay, she did make a pretty penny on the movies. I would say. Videos. I would say. Suleiman became famous in 19, 2009 by giving birth to eight children. And that's the only reason why she became famous. And she was taking fertility pills after that she already had four children. Doesn't sound like she needed fertility pills if she gave birth to four children. She had a plan, uh, obviously. She loves to be a mom. But she needs fertility pills? To a litter. For a litter? <laughs> she quickly became the world's longest surviving octuplets. Octopus? Octuplets? Like her six older children, they were conceived by in vitro fertilization. Really, but not not the um, octuplets, though. All of them. No, everyone was conceived by in, in vitro. The older ones and the octuplets. In vitro fertilization. But you to to get welfare for someone to to collect and live on welfare based on the fact that you have consciously and deliberately desire to be a mother, that that's not fair to the taxpayers. I mean, that's your problem if you want to be a mother. You know what I mean? Like, if you purposely try to get pregnant by taking fertility pills... Well, then there should have been some sort of regulation concerning the fertility clinic. It's not like somebody has a job for a long time and they get laid off and, oops, oops, I lost everything, I'm poor now. And that circumstance is beyond your control. But this woman had, was in complete control of all these children that she gave birth to. She, she deliberately wanted to have a, bun, a bunch of kids. And obviously she did not have the wherewithal to do that. Right, she did, not, she did not have a pot to piss in to have this many kids. How did she pay the, uh, what is it, uh, ten or thirty thousand dollars for the in vitro fertilization? Listen, if you're sexually active and, and, and you don't have a pot to piss in, then get tubal ligation uh. or something. Use contraception. So get an, uh, an IOU. Sponge. Get an IOU. The I mean sponge. an IUD. A sponge is probably the best. Yeah, but it's not the percentage of the contraceptive percentage success rate is not but I'm talking that from good. the woman's point of view. Yeah. It's better than an IOU. No. It's better than the pill. No, no, no. The IUD is is, is more successful than the sponge. But it causes inflammation. I see look, I, I, I don't know about the copper one that's non hormonal. I only know about the morena that is hormonal. So I don't know if inflammation applies to all IUD implants? Yes, it does. It does? It does? Yes, you've got something in the uterus there that's aggravating it all the time. It's much like a tattoo it's a foreign, or a cutting or etc. Foreign object. Which is always uh, a sub, a sub, uh, 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 immune thing. So... Affecting your immune system. So this person that I know that works, runs the reptile department in a uh, famous local pet shop. She is, she has lots of tattoos all over her body and she keeps on getting new ones. So what you're saying is her immune system is under a lot of strain and will constantly look at the tattoo as a foreign invader. Correct. A low grade. Low grade. Low grade. So, so constantly. If, though. So, if God forbid, knock on wood, she gets an infection, she gets sick. Let's say she gets the she gets influenza. Her immune system will not be up to par. Already being taxed, and then taxed more. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. I think Gary Noll said something about this once. Yeah. 
Bible says about it too. What about? It don't like tattoos and cuttings. A year ago, the world was introduced to the former Archbishop of Buenos Aires on a balcony in St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. Pope Francis asked the crowds to bless him. I salute Pope Francis on this St. Patrick's Day weekend, 2014. He is the only Pope, except for was it Pope John Paul, the one from Poland? Yeah, he's pretty cool. But this guy takes the cake. This this Pope is of a hundred percent behind, even though I'm not I don't practice organized religion or Catholicism. This guy is cool. So far, I salute Pope Francis. Continue. It was an act of humility. The first of many. Pope Francis is an unlikely media rock star. But that is what he has become. Millions of people have found hope in his humble manner. They found hope in this Pope. Hope in a Pope. From shunning the official papal apartment to driving around in a Ford uh, foment, foment. What? Wait a minute. Focus, excuse me. Driving around in a Ford Focus, the pontiff is changing the tone of the Catholic Church. I, I know a Philippine woman that couldn't say, couldn't pronounce Ford Focus. She said Focus. That's the way it came out. Thought it was cute. She, she made headlines. She didn't, but. When asked about gay clergy, by responding, Who am I to judge? That's true. Some interpret that as a hint that the church's views on homosexuality will change. That is unlikely. I heard the Republicans did not like when he said, who am I to judge about, about oh, Of course they don't. They're always judging. It's their hatred. They're hating. They're haters. They're haters. They're bigots. They're haters. God. The Pope is not signaling that Catholic teaching will change, but rather that the Vatican's priorities will. He wants to focus on the needs of the poor and the disenfranchised in society. He also wants his bishops to live more simpler lives. Why doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he be the first pope to do something that makes a lot of common sense and remove the law that, that, uh, Pastors of the Catholic Church, priests, have to be celibate. Yeah. You know, come on, it's very unrealistic. And How come they don't feel celibate when they're banging some little boy? Yeah, it's true. They're not celibate when they're banging. It don't a little bother boy. them then, does it? You know, not. Well, I mean, you know, did did Jesus ever tell the disciples? that they had to be celibate? No! But the Catholic Church sure made every everybody celibate from there the Bible. one Pope who put that in motion. One Pope did? Yeah. Was he nuts? Was he corrupt? They were all corrupt back then. I'm sure I'm sure he had a, uh, a, 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 a an active social life. A girlfriend? And more. In the nunnery perhaps? He probably had access with all the world being that they were so greedy and rich the, the the popes back then they probably had access to anything that a king would normally have, have access to yeah here in North Jersey the Pope has left his mark with the appointment of a co-adjutor Archbishop Bernard Hebda the presumed replacement for Newark Archbishop John Myers. Okay. Myers has been embroiled in controversy over his handling of a priest who violated a legal agreement never to minister to children. Myers also is enlarging 
He's already lavish retirement home. Lavish retirement home. He's, they're supposed to be humble. Humble servants of God. Yeah. Not live in mansions. Why even the the Levites priesthood never had land in ancient Israel. Uh -huh. They were supported. Supported by Strauss? Get it? Levi Strauss? I'm on a roll this St. Patrick's Day. I'm on a roll. This Not a Kaiser roll either. Go ahead, sir. This stark contrast to the lifestyle embraced by Pope Francis shows the challenges the pontiff faces, internally and externally. In his early years as pontiff, Jean Paul II was a vigorous force on the world stage, challenging autocratic governments and empowering democratic movements. Yet he failed. He did? at challenging the autocracy that is the Roman Curia the Vatican's governing body hmm interesting Pope Francis must reform the Curia before he can attempt to transform a secular world focused on power and money into something more altruistic hmm Many people are listening to what he says and are heartened by his humility, but the Catholic Church is a large ship that does not change direction quickly. The true. The pontiff rides in a Ford Focus while Myers plans to retire to a 7,500 square foot mansion. Wow with an indoor exercise pool. The Pope has much work to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's it, right? Thank you for joining us for this week's Uncensored, Hard-Hitting Truth Show, formerly known as Progressive Discussions. This is St. Patrick's Day weekend, 2014, and uh, tomorrow on March the 17th, I will eat so much uh, corned beef and cabbage, I will start to see leprechauns. Where's me gold? Me gold? Where's me gold? Hey, you'll be kissing a lot of Blarney stones. I'll be kissing the Blarney. I'll be <coughs> Maybe kissing the right the kind of stones, Scott. Oh my I'll God. be kissing the, 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 the Blackthorn Shillelagh here with my authentic, my shamrock of authenticity, as you can see. All right. Uh, th thank you. We'll see you next time. Uh, this is the first launching of our show with the new name. All right. No more labels. No more political parties. No more pigeonholing us into categories. It's about doing the right thing and making the right decision for the population, for the most of us. Yes, I will do that. I will do that. Say so long to these people. Uh, so long, these people. Yes. And uh, if you're going to drink on St. Patrick's Day, please watch out. Be careful of the all the DWI, DWIs out there, the police. Yeah. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. <laughs>